Willow episode 5 review, where we forget the story of the episode in the same episode. Although this episode does have the most significant event of Willow history happening in it. As soon as we get past this nonsense. Do you remember at the end of episode 4 where we're getting stalked by those sorcerers? Well, apparently we've time jumped and they've been harassed and attacked by the sorcerers. And now we're just coming in at the end of it. If you thought you were going to get an action-packed episode where they were being hunted and chased. Oh no, no. Instead, we're just going to get a uh, eclectic mix of what we could have actually had instead. And we're just all running from them because, you know, we're cowards. <laughs> A Laura and Demon Boy are running from a bird who's also running. No, I don't know why she's not flying either. We've got Cage Face fighting Princess Girl, and it's important to know she's got her bow with an arrow attached. What happened to the quiver and the other three arrows? We will never know. My theory is the arrows were glued into the quiver, and that is why rather than see her actually pull an arrow out of the quiver, uh, we're just gonna see her with it already attached. Obviously, it's extremely easy to run with an arrow already knocked. Don't think about it. Just turn your brain off. It'll be fine. Ginger's running. I don't know why. There's three groups and only two enemies. Bird finally remembers it can fly and catches up with them. And at this point, you're probably thinking, hang on, Alora's the most powerful sorceress in the universe. Why is she just running away and not doing anything? I don't know. For the last two episodes, she's been able to do really powerful magic and then forgot how to do magic in the next episode. Welcome to the third time. But this is it, the moment you've all been waiting for. Cage Face is still chasing her. She's running away, turns around realizing she's not gonna get away, takes hold of her arrow, and misses. But just look how many cuts that we have in the couple of seconds where she does it. We get three cuts because I don't think she can pull the bow back properly. She took four arrows with her, she fired one and it missed. But don't worry. It gets worse. Oh no, I've missed him. He's still chasing me. What am I going to do now? I should probably just throw the bow on the ground. It's useless. Do you mean to tell me I fired one arrow out of four and I've missed all of them? This thing's crap. It's broken. Throughout all this time, Willow is just hiding behind a rock. I think he's hiding. He could be standing there and it's just, you know, about a foot tall. But they all keep running away. Somehow Borman ends up getting chased by Bird Woman, even though she was chasing a Laura's group. So who was he getting chased by? Again, there was four groups and there's only two enemies, so I don't know why everyone was running around. Honestly, I still don't know what's going on here. Willow comes out and we get this. I am not kidding. That's a flamethrower. He's holding a flamethrower. You can see the metal with the nozzle on the end. Is his backpack supposed to have a petrol tank in it or what? When I was watching it the first time, I'm like, oh, that's a magic spell. That's supposed to be his wand. That isn't a wand. That looks nothing like his wand. But we get this as he literally just annihilates her with a flamethrower. Like I said, clearly not his wand. And at several times throughout this episode, I'm like, someone's taking the piss. And it turns out, yes, yes, they are. I mean, I half expected him to say yippee ki yay, motherfucker. What the hell is that? Don't worry about it. What do you mean, don't worry about it? Just ignore it and never mention it again for the rest of your life. How I had this flamethrower. Or why in the future, whenever I get attacked by any enemy, why I'm not using a flamethrower again. Because it clearly didn't affect me. I didn't fall over like when I normally use magic. Because this isn't magic. It's because I've got a backpack flamethrower. Just don't worry about it. Turn your brain off. It'll be f I'm supposed to say that. Not the pissing show. But it's not over because we've still got cage face to deal with. But obviously, Princess and Stable Hand react to Cage Face with the, the kind of decorum that you would expect of two strong, independent female warriors. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. So they run off as well. There's just a lot of running off in this. I said I didn't think it was meant to be a wand. He's got a tube going into his backpack. He's actually meant to be having a flamethrower on him. Where did he get that from? This is important information and they're just like, time jump, but they'll assume that it happened when they weren't watching. So somehow running randomly in different directions, they all end up at the same place. But given we've already had them meet up randomly in a forest before anyway, I suppose it's just a magic part of the universe. It's not bad script writing. How long can they keep this up for? I don't know, but he was chasing you. He's about two foot behind you. How did you lose him and why wasn't that on camera? Crone won't let them rest until they have a Laura and have killed us. This crone's beginning to grow on me, I've got to be honest. We can't outrun them, so where can we go? So they're getting chased by deadly enemies they need somewhere to escape to. Is there anywhere they could possibly reach in time? Into the Wildwood. What, you mean over there? <laughs> Help! I'm getting chased and we're all gonna die! Okay, but we could go 30 meters away. Well, what about the, you know? No, I don't know. I'm an audience member. I didn't even know flamethrowers existed until 30 seconds ago. People say there's something in the air. The trees. 
the water. Yeah, um, this is a rather important part of the episode because they're answering why didn't we go in that forest before and why won't they follow us into the forest? It's the peril. Once you enter, you don't want to leave. There's something about it, something magical. It's dangerous. No one ever escapes that forest. And so you'd have to be stupid to enter it. And they're not that stupid. I mean, we are, but the, the people chasing us aren't. Trust me, we are not spending any more time in there than we need to. Yeah, that's right. That's absolutely correct. Because there's something important about all of this piece of information that really annoys me. They forget about it. Everybody forgets that this is a magical forest that you can't escape. So she's actually bang on right that, oh, don't worry about us, we'll be fine. To hear them. Where did he jump from? He like fell from the sky. What was that? Where did he come from? There's nothing behind him to even jump off. Either way, without anyone even wondering why he's got a cage over his face, we all continue running. Run! Pretty good advice from Willow. Run! And then he forgets to do it himself. Oh, no! He's literally waving everyone past. Yo, go, go, go on first. You know, it's because he's lower to the ground, so he's got better center of gravity. It really allows him to speed up. Willow is 100% getting caught by that guy. Oh no, somehow he's ended up in the front of the group, even though he was at the back of the group two seconds ago. How slow are you running? Oh, I'm just out for a casual jog. <laughs> you do realize what's chasing you. So we enter the dangerous, deadly, magical forest that you can't escape that we're about to forget about in about three minutes. Cage Face refuses to chase after him because it's just too dangerous in there. Stand there and stare at some trees for a bit. Now, obviously, since the magical creatures have been stopped by the evil magical sorceress from going into the magical forest. I would just want to nail that down because it is fundamental to how stupid this entire episode is. Stay sharp. The wild wood is seductive. It lures you in with its sights and sounds. The next thing you know, officiating weddings. Now that is the other option, which we might find out in the next episode. Everything from this point could just be the forest, but if it is, this entire episode is pointless. So quite frankly, I'm not sure which is worse. But they go through the forest, they're very concerned about the perils, the dangers. We're not going to stay in here for a second longer than we need to. When suddenly, the shiny bits in the sky. Oh look, butterflies are everywhere. <gasps> Nature. Alora's looking at the butterflies like she wants to put them in her next batch of muffins. And they're having obviously understandable conversations. Bone reapers that killed my family fled into the wild one. Okay, but you've said that before in a previous episode. Why are you telling her again? Maybe they're still here. Oh, so they're still here then. It's like someone read a how-to manual. Set up and payoff. Check. Foreshadowing. Hey, you know those people that we're gonna run into? Uh, they were around this area. Check. Somewhere. Well, it didn't think they'd be nowhere. <laughs> Them existing somewhere is already included in I think they're here. This one is a splinter from the great tree at the center of all things. Should have taken a log then, it would have been even more powerful. Can I just, you know, try it? You couldn't even fight off a bird two minutes ago and now you're like, oh, can I use those powerful ones in existence? There's a strict system of magical pedagogy. Ew. I mean, if you didn't know what the word meant, it'd sound closer to pedigree than anything else. Why the ooh? The only thing I care about in this scene is what on earth she thought he meant. It means wisdom or knowledge. Yeah, but what did she think you meant? He says before you can use the wand, you've got to learn all the four pillars of magic. You must master the four pillars of- I grew the Eckleberry bush. And we made that salve and, you know, cured Graydon. You only cured him because you sucked his soul out using a spell that nobody knew about before except you. Why are we even mentioning in the salve? That didn't do anything. And you said we cured Graydon. He told you he didn't want you to. <laughs> I swear, Willow rewrites history every episode. Divination, seeing the future. Nearly impossible for even the most accomplished sorcerer. Can you divinate? Can you see the future? A princess and stable hand gonna bang? It's Disney. The answer is yes. Hey, maybe I'm a magician myself. Is the Witcher Blood Origins gonna be trash? Yes. <laughs> Will Willow ever write a script which it remembers in future episodes? The future is uncertain, leaning towards no. Hey, this divination business is a piece of piss. On occasion, I have been known to see visions of things to come. Is that a joke about your wedding night? Was I in them? It's a bit presumptuous. I know you can butter a pair of muffins, but it doesn't mean you're the woman of his dreams. Was I in them? <laughs> I can see the future. Oh, have you seen my future? Ask about his face. You have to ask about his face. Why did you pull that weird face after I said, do you know what's going to happen to me in the future? Let's start with concentration. She's not even asking. Oh, let's start with concentration. Okay, how about we concentrate on what on earth that face was? What are you doing? I'm using my mind. 
to remove that stick from your butt and transform you into someone who will let me use the wand. Oh, we're back with the modern speech again, are we? I could be wrong, but I've always assumed that phrase comes from sort of royalty and nobility and posh people. So we had like the lords and ladies with etiquette and their proper posture, which is obviously very straight as they walk around. So it looks like they've got to stick up themselves to maintain that posture all the time. But that's not what it's like in this. The royalty in this are just zoomers. I half expect them to come on screen with a hoodie and a backwards baseball cap. Yeah, yeah, let's go in that magical forest, bro. Don't worry, I'm not going to do the rest of the review like this. We don't get much chance to wear baseball caps in the UK because they generally require like son. But Bowman talks to Demon Boy about how he might go around picking up a Laura. It's like, I know you've got a crush on her. I can give you some advice. And everybody seems to forget that we're only on this quest to rescue the prince who she's meant to be marrying. She's literally engaged to a guy who got kidnapped. And everyone's just more concerned about who can get their end away first. I do think it comes under basic human decency that if you are ever on a quest to save your fiance from evil, don't bang anyone on the way there. Maybe I'm just old fashioned that way, I don't know. I mean, is that even something you would know about? Great, Bubby. Women are the central preoccupation of my life. And how's that going for you? Because at the start of the series, you were in prison. And as we find out later in the episode, his life before that wasn't good either. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you need a hobby. Foreman, this turns out to be another one of your side quests. So help me, I'm going to cut out your heart. See that passion it evokes? I don't know whether that's passion. Princess just being generally evil is kind of her default mood. If anything, the time to worry around her would be if she was nice to you. Yeah, but how do you do it? Okay, first of all, the most important thing to understand about the fairer sex. Okay, this ought to be good. And this is gonna sound counterintuitive, but trust me, it's true. I'd assume he was gonna say bank balance, but I'm not sure banks even exist in this universe. They love it, they love it when you... Start the first bank of a fantasy realm. Well, that's never a good sign. Maybe he's gonna say a strong jawline, but that's taking it a bit far. Anyway, Borman, what do they love? Your jaw to be attached to your face. Uh, basic, but it's true. I know, Borman, finish that sentence. What do they love? But we never find an answer to that sentence because obviously when you see skulls in the area, it's generally a sign that something's about to go horribly wrong. They don't normally go this horribly wrong though. Everything's just a bit too coincidental. Listen, guys, I'm begging you to trust me when I tell you that no matter what happens next, I have a plan. Have you ever sat round in a ring in the middle of a forest and you could have sat absolutely anywhere on earth but you just end up choosing the one place where this happens and everything will work oh yeah you're surrounded by people they were just all sitting under blankets in a perfect circle around some logs and you just happen to walk into the circle and sit in the middle of it and wait for them those people didn't walk up to him they didn't ambush them as they walked past they were just crouched on the forest floor in the hope that someone would walk along and sit in the exact spot they needed them to where they were circling this better be a magic delusion because otherwise that is ridiculous so they threaten them in the usual manner you know what that is where you just hold a really really blunt axe to someone's face and they're taken to the village which is in the magical forest that no one can escape from built an entire city including walkways gotta say the local decor pretty standard from what you'd expect in the countryside of scotland and we get so many skulls on trees that it just makes me want to go and play dark tide again but they're approached by a massive jacked absolute tank of a man and you know who he is he's the leader just joking this is a disney production boom laurie toth's first name is uh, laurie but for some reason he's insecure about it <laughs> yeah we gotta humiliate him instead i mean why in a ravaging war band would the most muscular guy be the leader that's just stupid now now boys Play nice. Oh, a high-pitched voice. I wonder who that could be. You don't look dead. Ah, yes, with such witty dialogue as that, you could only be the leader of the camp. You can imagine my surprise when Toth came back and said he'd run down tear as lean cut out. Wait, that Toth is the guy from the first episode which spoke to Borman. How'd you work that one out? You can imagine my surprise when Toth came back. I imagine that is a surprise because no one's supposed to be able to leave the forest. So how did he leave the forest and go all the way to the shield? Which presumably is a really long way because now we've time jumped and had four episodes. So they must have traveled a long way away from it, surely. It's not like you can pop there in a day and come back again. Not in that super speedy wagon they had. They must have traveled miles. And we're still forgetting the fact that no one can leave the forest. Four kids and a beanpole that looked exactly like Thraxus Borman. Definitely referring to the first episode then, aren't you? If you're not vigilant at each moment, I swear you will not survive. <laughs> you are entitled to an explanation. No one gets out of scaling alive. No one's supposed to leave the forest either, but apparently people are 
popping out all over the place. Oh, mine's up scale in the mountains, run by the trolls. Oh, now we've mentioned trolls. Every time they mention something, it appears later in the episode, which implies that it's the forest doing it. Just that if the forest is doing it, it still doesn't make any sense. I'm going to enjoy this. But do I get to ask at any point why you've got a tree on your forehead? I'm just, I'm just wondering. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're thinking, so am I. I doubt that very much. Take him to my tent and make sure he's well tied up. I don't know. See, that kind of sounds like we're on the same page. Look, I'm just happy that Borman's finally found a lady that's not locked behind a vault. I mean, he talks a big game, but safe cracking to get it one did look a little bit desperate. And the others, do you want them? Or should we just fire up the old skull boiling cauldron? You have a special cauldron for that? I mean, yes, we want to boil your skulls, but we don't want to contaminate the food cauldron with it. We're not animals. You can tell by her horrified expression she thinks separating the two is just taking away taste from the muffins. That's my missing ingredient! That's why the prince loved me so much. Oh, hey up, someone's pissed off Karen again. She's got a bee in her bonnet and that makes it your problem. I mean, can you imagine meeting a new group and Kit is the first person that you come across? Be like, oh, well, I was just going to introduce you to this fun fair, but now I've met you, I... I just want to wear a skull as a mask. I wouldn't be surprised if Kit was what started the Bone Reavers. I'm Kit Tantalos of Tirasleen. I'm Queen Sorcia's daughter. Just look at the crazy eyes. Oh, congratulations, you popped out of somebody. What do you want, a medal? Scorpia, actually. It's her sublime eminence. Scorpia's fine. My brother was abducted from our castle. How do those lines go together? And why does she have a tree on her forehead? I'm so confused. We literally had, I'm a queen, I'm a queen. My brother was kidnapped. Where did that come from? I live in a forest, love. What do you expect me to do about it? Now, if you did want access to my lumber mill, then maybe we'd have something to negotiate about. My brother was abducted from our castle. Wasn't us. Wasn't, was it? It was servants of the Withered Crown. Okay, but why are you telling her your life story? You're talking to her like she's a D&D &D player. You're trying to catch up with the story as efficiently as possible. But the thing is, we've been watching the show, dear. But she explains, my brother got kidnapped. We're going beyond the Shattered Sea. And this is our mission. So please, let us go. If you could find it in your hearts to let us go, I am sure my mother would repay the favor. And you can keep Borman. What? They wear people's skulls as face masks. What are you doing? I mean, I have said on multiple occasions that Kit is evil. But if you wanted proof, then this. She's even look at her face. Oh, you can keep Borman. Uh. Kit has got confused between saving her kidnapped brother and the Hunger Games where only one of them can survive. She's just going to slowly off people as the series goes on, one at a time. That's why she only had four arrows. It was to off the last four companions. I think I can probably get the others killed by just environmental damage. He's like the worst. That's your reason for offering a companion? He's the worst? You're worse! Yeah, so if you could get my friend and boil his skull, even though he's been a lifelong family ally, because, you know, ooh. You're wasting your breath. They don't have a whit of mercy about them. Who are you speaking about mercy to, you crazy evil bit? Look, it's no use trying to negotiate and sacrifice one of our close friends. These people don't have mercy. I tried to sacrifice my parents with them last week and they wouldn't even do it. I was disgusted with their immorality. This is like some weird twisted universe where everything evil is good and everything good is evil. And they're too stupid to realize what you're offering them. You're offering them Borman. You're offering to sacrifice one of your friends. Why are you pitching yourself as if you're the clever, witty, intelligent ones? They're too thick to understand the fun that they could have murdering our friend. These are really wonderful people, aren't they? This is the main couple you're supposed to be supporting in the episode, by the way. Maybe we won't fire up the old skull pot just yet. The leader of the evil murderous warband is more moral than our party of heroes. <laughs> See that? This guy walks over like a foot and a half taller than her and she squares up to him. I've said it before, but there's a reason why men don't go through life speaking like the women in these shows. And it's because if they did, they're gonna get the crap beaten out of them. You're gonna square up to a guy that not only is massively bigger than you, but he's surrounded by an entire warband. Alora glances at the wand, which is just sticking out of his backpack now. That's not setting up anything, I'm sure. Pa I've got the most powerful wand in the world. I'm not even going to pack it inside my backpack. Let's just strap it to the side. It'll be fine. Lock the nail win and the pretty fella down in the borough. <laughs> I mean, maybe I just don't 2022 very well, but pretty fella. Is that what his character's meant to be in the show? The looker. But keep this one here. She'll make good sport. She'd last about two seconds next to that guy. I, I don't know how much support you're going to have. But Borman's in her tent and he's tied up to the central pillar, desperately trying to talk his way out of this. Firstly, can I just say, you look wowser. Haven't aged a day in, what's it been, 80 moons? You have. 
Yeah, I mean, you have as well, but he's just lying to you because he's tied to a pillar. There's a reason why we still talk about men in their 50s and 60s aging like fine wine. Whereas on the other side, they start jabbing paralytic agents into their face. You haven't aged a day. It must be the bobbles. I can't work out why you look so young. Maybe it's that stunning resemblance you have to Peter Capaldi as the thinker. I remember a lean, hungry kid. So eager to please. Still eager to please. All right, love, calm down. This isn't your only friend's DMs. I can't work out whether I want to boil your skull and wear it as a mask or sit on it. I thought you were dead. I wept. When I found out you weren't. <laughs> but yes, that we find out that the evil murderous warband leader who's war Walking around carrying a knife is actually really deep in her feels about him. Like a lot, or we'll just... Great shot. I was aiming a touch higher. It's a small target, I can understand you missed. But she asked him what happened in the meantime, why he didn't return, and just when you think you're about to get the story... We cut to a different scene, because why would you want to know that? Now we do find out that these two are trapped in a prison behind a gate which is held together by string. You could chew through it if you really needed to. And that's if we forget the rather major plotline. Willow's a sorcerer! Oh yeah, but my magic doesn't work on string. Look at the size of the gap on the left. He could actually fit through that. But they are indeed trapped in prison. And it's important to remember that this is a prison. It's a deliberate closed off area that they will have gone in and inspected to make sure there was no secret way out. There was nothing that people could use to escape. It's not like they just miss or forget about important things which are in a prison cell. But Demon Boy is a little bit preoccupied at the moment. Training with Allura takes up a lot of your time. Do you think that she's ignoring me? You try to exile her into another dimension. Ladies tend to be a little less trusting after that sort of thing. Yeah, but he was a demon. It's not like it was his fault. Do you really want to go down the path of blaming people for the actions that they were forced to do that they didn't want to do? Because that is a real kind of worms very quickly and definitely not a conversation Disney would win. Because I feel like we had a connection. Hold it right there, Graydon. She is Elora Dannon, destined to save the world. She doesn't have time to connect with you or anyone else. That's your problem with what he said? You are missing one of the fundamental elements of your story in that she's got a husband. You know, that small person that you're trying to rescue, the entire point of your quest is literally to go and save her Laura's husband, and yet for some reason, we're all trying to get her end away with it. I know she can butter your muffins to within an inch of their lives, but this isn't the point, lads. So you're saying- All right, Kathy Newman, there's no reason to go around telling people what they've just said. Saving the world and having a relationship are mutually exclusive. I mean, generally, yes. Because I'd hope that one took priority over the other. So if the other at any point even became even a minor detriment to saving the world, then yes. Look, I know I've got 30 seconds to avert the apocalypse, but Sharon's just put on the little black dress. Priorities, man. But Willow's having none of it. Of course you've got to stop thinking about her in that way. Not because she's got a husband, but because it would be inconvenient at the moment. Where are your morals, people? Well, what if I can't, Willow? Then we need to introduce you to her husband, the sword fighter. I have a feeling he'd solve that problem pretty quickly. But at that moment, Willow looks like the cat that's got the cream. He wanders over and finds little buildings in the brick wall. What is that? Brownies. Why did you put brownies in prison? Especially with a door that's got big massive holes which are far bigger than the brownies. And if you are setting up a prison cell and going through to look if there's anything that could allow people to escape, and you go, oh, Look at that entire village of brownies. Do you think that they could possibly interfere with us locking up all of these innocent people that are about to get- Oh no, no, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Brownies don't care what we do to the innocent people's skulls that we capture. All brownies are evil too now, apparently. But over at the other prison cell, their door is a lot stronger. I'm not sure if that is actually just meant to be the jaws of a creature that they've stuck on as a door. But obviously Kit is being a normal, friendly, upbeat self. <sighs> Oh, what are they gonna do to her? That's the spirit. I didn't mind when I said they could take Borman, but who am I going to bang now? I've never been so upset when they took away my plaything. I'm sure she'll be okay. How could you possibly be sure that? They wear people's skulls as masks. Yes, and knowing that, you wanted to give one of your friends to them. But it seems to all be fun and games until it's the person that you've been bumping uglies with. And they're gonna kill her. I mean, hopefully, but there's still three episodes left and I just don't think we're that lucky. You know, I believe that love is the most powerful force in the universe. I mean, at least she nailed my reaction when somebody says that kind of thing. Love is the most powerful thing. Have you considered the atomic bomb? Wait, what? That's the only justified response if someone starts spouting that nonsense at you. That's how I know we're gonna save Eric. Are you kidding? No? I mean, at least you've remembered that you've got a husband and he's the only reason you're out in the first place because nobody else can. My best friend is being tortured right now when you're talking to me about love? No. Your best friend is in an unknown danger and she's talking to you 
about your brother, which you're on a mission to rescue, and is the only reason you're in this forest to begin with. So if you could please get your small little one-track mind out of the gutter of whatever mysterious bodily fluids you could get yourself involved with today, maybe, maybe we could just focus on something more important. Oh, right, because you rolled around in the grass with my brother a few times? Jade is my... We're friends. Yeah, it's that episode for them. The show is desperately trying to make out that this is the first time they've ever done anything, all because it forgot what they did in the first episode. You're gonna be a great night. Well, we've already gone through this once because they've been doing this for years, but no, apparently it's all just the first time and we've got to go over it again because episode one wasn't enough. Just like Kit, the show really wants it to be shoved in your face. We pretend not to know, sometimes even convince ourselves we don't know, but deep down we know. Why would any of you even care about any of that? I'm just so desperate to convince myself that the two people that hold hands every night aren't doing anything. I mean, that is some powers of self-delusion you've got there, but... This is 2022, so it's not as if it would be in common. I feel sorry for her, for loving someone who can't love her back. Because you're a deranged bint. You're the most evil deranged person in the entire party, and all of us just want to heat up the skull cauldron ourselves. You don't know the first thing about her, or me. I wish that was true. There's not enough brain soap in the world to scrub my mind of your physical existence on the planet. I might go full Total Recall and record a video of myself talking to myself, so in the rare off chance that I get amnesia, be like, look, I'm sure you're annoyed and upset about the situation. But look on the bright side, at least you don't know the first thing about this person. That makes you happier than you can actually remember. But Alora's like, haha, I stole the ones that was just sticking out of his bag. I can't remember how to do magic and I've never been taught it, but we need to get through that gate, and so I'll probably just magically remember somehow like I did before. Back at Borman and he's describing how he got out of the mines. I fought my way out. Well, there's an image and a half. It's a surprisingly apt analogy for what watching Willow is like, to be honest. I always say I enjoy doing these reviews, but that's after it's finished, unloaded, and completed. You get that sense of satisfaction. But filming them is very similar to this. <laughs> Desperately struggling for breath among the fetid air of filth. But he goes through making up a story about how he fought his way out rather than hiding. He says he desperately wanted to get back to her. We get his story of what's going on compared to the images on the screen. So this is him desperately wanting to get back to her. It's basically a shampoo advert. A shampoo advert where they want to make him look like a moron. He had to stop and save a couple of innocent traveling passengers. Yeah, they thought their bed springs would be dangerous and so he just had to investigate. No love, I think we proved they're safe. I mean, I know he said earlier in the show he was successful, but he's gotten entire group of four of them going here. Framed as a criminal. I have a feeling falling over and knocking one of the guards in armor isn't going to end well for you. So he's telling her all the reasons he couldn't get back to her, but really he went to a bar, was chatting up a load of people, fell over on a guard, got caught, and got sent back to uh, the cell where we found him at the start of the series. And employing my not inconsiderable powers of persuasion. I mean, are you sure you want to? I mean, I know she's a queen, but you had four people back at that bar, mate. It's not as if you didn't have any other options. Mm. Not inconsiderable. And she should know, because she's had so much to compare it against. But then we get an incredibly stupid question. And lie as if, oh yeah, the, the audience all just swallow that one. The relic. You didn't find it. Oh, you mean this relic on my belt right here, which you 100% would have found when you searched me before you tied me to this pillar? You mean that relic? No, I don't have it at all. This thing on my belt doesn't exist. Yeah, this thing right here doesn't exist. I mean, when you come out with a lie like that, it almost feels like the episodes are shown out of order and he hasn't found it yet. Which actually would make a lot of sense. If this episode was supposed to be shown earlier in the series, then that guy saying, oh, well, I just leave the woods and go out and attack people on the distance, then we wouldn't have been as far away from the shield and the distance would have made sense. This is only weird, and it's only a weird episode because it's so late in the series. But if it was shown earlier, then a lot of the plot holes probably wouldn't have happened. And the others... Alagash? Trolls got him. Oh, this is the second time we've mentioned trolls now. Considering everything else that we keep mentioning in this forest turns up, I'm sure trolls aren't going to make an appearance. I only hope he suffered as much as possible. You hope that he suffered, so you've actually never seen him vanish, and so he's probably going to appear with the trolls, isn't he? As in this show, we only talk about things which we're setting up for the next scene. And then Martigan. They got him too. Yeah, it doesn't even answer the question. We're just going to cut away. Nobody needs to know what happened to Mad Mardigan. It's not as if you're interested about that at all. But either way, Willow is deciding to annoy small people. Look, I mean, it's not an opportunity he gets often. I can understand his excitement. Out comes 
that. And this whole thing is incredibly basic and cheap. We literally just made one scene, got them to stand in it, and then composited his hair over the top of it and did a backwards camera from the other direction, so we only see them in this shot. It's such an easy thing to do, I could do it from my room. At one point, he even goes, do you want to come with me? And like, no, no, we need to stay here. Uh, I'm sure the budget just couldn't stretch to small people. Uh, I'm looking for some old friends of mine. Perhaps you might know them. Why would I know them? They're brownies. Suppose on Nell winning the world know each other. Do you have any idea how offensive that is? No. Oh, you've got something in common with this other person. Maybe you've heard of them because that increases the chance that you know them. And I know this is meant to be a joke, but it's also an idea that you believe, so... What's the difference? But don't worry, member berries from the movie are back. If you thought they were done with the last episode, oh no. Willow! Am I glad to see you? It's been years. And all it took was for you to be accidentally locked up in the same prison cell. Isn't this a coincidence? But this whole scene is largely pointless. It doesn't contribute anything to the episode because he's a guy in a wall. What's he gonna say? That's how you get things like this, which they think is really entertaining. She just wants to be famous now. They all want to be famous for what? I don't know. Decoupage! Seriously, I'm surprised you didn't just say TikTok and get it over with. Uh, Elora's up there. The baby! Member Barry! But he asked for his help, and he's like, look, I can't help you that much, because the Bone Reavers, they just set up camp above us. I'm like, yeah, but they also made this prison cell and left you in the wall. In episode one, he killed this group's leader, like one of their friends they'd known all their lives. They don't even seem bothered about that. I'm not sure they remember that he died in episode one. But now it's like, oh yeah, they moved in, they made this their prison cell, they left us alone because, you know, we're all friendly with each other. They're nice people once you get to know them. The Skull Cauldron victims that they lock up in this same area, we talk to them, they're nice, but they don't stay long. I find that helps, it means we don't get too attached. But Willow, the sorcerer, had to be reminded that he was a sorcerer and could use magic, by a brownie. With Cheryl in this one, we can create fossil- I better go and get that so I can use magic to escape through the twig door made of string. I couldn't think of that on my own unless a brownie reminded me of it. Oh, and it's been stolen, that's a problem. It's not as if he could do magic without the wand. All I'm saying is if I needed a twig to do magic to save my life, then I would definitely bring two of them. And I don't know if anyone remembers the flamethrower we had at the start of the episode, which linked to his backpack, which was the fuel source. Well, um, I don't know where that fitted in either. Oh, crap. Couldn't have said it better myself, mate. So Elora's trying to do magic on the door, but obviously she can't because she doesn't know how to do magic. I'm sure it's... Avocado. Gadu. Avagadu. Someone is taking the piss in this show, I promise you. There's just one guy in the writer's room laughing his ass off, desperately trying to see what he can get away with. <laughs> yeah, I think I can make the showrunner swallow this one. This'll be funny. Are you just making that up? What are you doing? Weapon safety, love. What are you going to do next? Look down the end of it. Okay, you're just going to point it at your own head. Oh, fine. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and it goes off. Why are you smacking a twig? What are you doing to it? Telling it it's been naughty? Oh, I think it needs its batteries changing. It's not a TV remote. You don't just press the buttons harder. Have a good do. Okay, maybe it did work after all. Who knew that magic ones were just basically remote controls you had to smack when the batteries weren't working? But during this time, Borman has been subjected to a rather vigorous interrogation. Well, that can't be good. No, it cannot. I mean, it's in Willow. Was anyone expecting anything to be good? We're in episode five. If you haven't learned from history at this point, you never will. But they escape the cell. You insulted me with your sarcasm and your magnificent beard. Can't even remember him being sarcastic. Although at least his beard does actually look real. Unintentionally. Meanwhile, Kit and Alora's escape has gone really well as they are already surrounded. And Kit's like, I'm sure I could take you all on. I don't know where they've got the swords from because we never saw them fight anyone in the first place. And let's face it, it's Kit. She couldn't fight away out of a paper bag. We don't want to hurt anybody. And have you considered not making this show? Because quite frankly, it's painful. And if anything, we've learned that you and Magic, the only people you're going to hurt is from your own incompetence. All we want is to... Where is she? I'm here. <laughs> All I want is the stable hand. Has anyone seen her? Hello? I'm over his left shoulder. I'm literally in your eye line. Hello? I know I could have shouted out at any point previously when I saw you being surrounded by people with swords, but I thought I'd just keep my mouth shut until you said my name. I'm sorry, I couldn't see you. You were 10 meters away. So the evil murderous warband just allow her to walk across the camp because she's waving around a rusty piece of metal. 
cut her loose. I don't know if you're aware of this tiny little child, but you're not the one in control here. Even your own framing looks ridiculous because of the sheer size difference. I will melt your face off, Lori. Oh no, please. Don't point a twig at me, I'm scared. We have a saying about people who make empty threats. No, no, you've got it confused. She's empty headed. But they take them all prisoner and she's desperately trying to free herself from the bonds. Oh, look at me wiggle against these ropes. Even though there's a very clear massive gap that I could have just pulled my hand through at any point in time. But at that moment she breaks free because if there's one thing that an evil warband that goes out into the wilds and kidnaps people all the time wouldn't be able to do, it's tie a rope around people's hands. Ah, they just don't have any practice with the knots. It's understandable. But she grabs a knife and decides to take the leader hostage. Doesn't quite go to plan though. I'm lots of fun. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Have a feeling you say that to all the girls. I'm gorgeous. I'm all yours. Oh, this went in an unexpected direction really fast. <laughs> but she flips her over her shoulder and they have a fight. It doesn't exactly go to Stable Hand's plan. And at this point, I'm not even sure if they're fighting. I mean, they might be fighting. I'm just not sure there's too much straddling involved. But as the fight continues, Stable Hand gets annihilated, flipped down face first into the ground, and just when it's all about to be over. Oh, what's that? You've got a mark on your neck. I'm sure that's important. <laughs> Take her to my tent. Wow, I didn't think it was that important. I think we found a taste. I was just going to use the knife, but now I found out you've got tattoos. Oh, get in my tent. So for some reason, Willow has asked the brownie to come up with their escape plan, and then he wrote it on a leaf. You see that large rock that looks like a cow with two heads? Why didn't you just draw a rock? Why did you draw a rock as a cow with two heads? You're the one making the map. Do not go that way. That is the wrong way. Why did you put it on the map then? I need to go to London. Okay, well, here's a map of France. Just put a modicum of thought into our script, shall we? But if sad, angry, frown prince runs that way... This guy's getting all the nicknames. I just thought he had a stuck-on beard. But in the same episode, he's got told the pretty one and sad, angry, frown prince. So the plan is that fake beard runs off, distracts all the guards, all the attention, and Willow goes the other way and does something useful. All right, let's do this. I know the feeling. I mean, I know that was only a small joke, but it was a bit of a low blow, don't you think? I mean, look how high he put his hands. At this point, you're just taking the piss. And can you see how little effort they actually put into merging these scenes together? His eyes are up here. He actually thinks the brownie is at this height. At least look down at him, especially when he even knows where to look in the same scene. No, you've got to look lower. Okay, should we reshoot that last one so that we're looking in the right? Nah, it'd be fine. It'd be fine. We. It'll do. All right, hop in. Nah, I left those days behind. And the budget just won't stretch to it. I can only stay in this extremely enclosed environment. Oh, you should see the prices of those screen screen bills, mate. We could afford it in the 80s, but in 2022, have you seen the cost of things? It's insane. But Rule, I can't do this without you. What do you mean you can't do without him? This is episode five. We've been doing without him the entire time. And in the mission, he was never even thought about because no one expected to meet him. If you can't do it without him, what was your original plan? You have him now. Yes, he's tiny and small. His brain is about the same size as mine. Though he may look like a sad, angry frown prince. I don't know where you get angry from. He looks more like a poppy that's just eaten the last treat. He has a hero's heart. What, like in a bag or something? Because whatever it is, it's certainly not his. But they go back in her tent and start discussing that tattoo that she's got on her neck. Oh yeah, by the way, I've got exactly the same one. What a coincidence. This is my father's mark. Turns out we do that to all the kids so that we know our family lineage. What is it? A sort of fantasy version of Jerry Springer's DNA tests. I've got so many baby mamas, I just can't keep track unless I physically mark them all. But it turns out she's the daughter of General Kale, the clearly evil military general working for the evil sorceress in the movie. I just want to really nail home that we're talking about really evil people here. He was the first Bone Reaver. Oh, come on. That was Jennifer Lawrence. Being described to us by an evil military warband leader that boils skulls. So it'd be weird if the show was like, these are the good guys from Disney. The kids' company. You and I are the only ones left. Where did her hair come from? We don't know. We don't know. But she's like, no, my father was a free man and he was killed by your people. Turns out, actually, 
Matt Mardigan killed him. Because remember, Matt Mardigan, the hero, the great guy that everyone loved from the first movie, he was just an ass, really. We've got to destroy his character overall. No, he just goes round and kills families now. He was the real bad guy of the movie, don't you understand? Good is bad and evil is great. Your mother was killed by the rangers that kidnapped you and took you to Tara's lane. They're the bad guys, the good guys in the TV show, which are actually trying to save the world. They're actually the baddies. And even though you actually work for them and you've been the soldier for them your entire life, don't you know, you should go and turn on the people that have raised you because it turns out they were bad all along, despite the fact that your parents were evil. I remember that you used to count the stars before you went to sleep to make sure there was just as many up there as the night before. I mean, that sounds not only entirely stupid, but... Really, really time consuming. 25 trillion and one, 25 trillion and two, 25 trillion and three. <laughs> she must have been knackered. Beth Morda served the crone. Beth Morda made a pact with the slaves of Galadorn. She'd help them overthrow their masters in exchange for their loyalty. Oh, well, that's all right then. I mean, as long as they were evil and did horrible evil things for an evil sorceress to innocent people that didn't deserve it. But they got the freedom, so it's fine. That makes them morally good people then, doesn't it? They had an excuse and that makes them the good guys. People do whatever's necessary to be free. Yes, and that makes them evil, you crazy immoral bint. That means they're not responsible for their actions. It's not like they should be held accountable for their own decisions. That's crazy talk. There's a power imbalance and that makes evil good for some reason that we haven't quite discussed yet. And after, when not more fell? Those who survived fled. The armies of Tyrus, Lean and Galadorn, they pursued us. Based. You were literally an evil empire that ruled the entire place and wanted the destruction of the world, the subjugation of the people, and to make everyone else's life a living hell. And when they finally overturned your evil rule, they made sure that you couldn't regroup to come back and do it all over again. And you're like, oh, the good guys were stopping us being evil. This was horrific. Now you got what you deserved. I'm not sure why I have to sit here and listen to the evil person complain that they were subjected to justice. They feared us. They feared you because they knew that if you got a single ounce of power, you would make their lives a living hell. As they should. So why are you complaining then? Even she's like, you know, if we did get back in charge, you should see some of the things that we would do to those innocent people over there. It would be magnificent. By the way, feel sorry for us. Sooner or later we rise up. And so they were making sure you couldn't. Why take me with them? What better way to prevent an uprising than to steal their future? I mean, if she's their future, you didn't stand much chance. Raise children to believe their captors are their saviors. Make them loyal. Make them soldiers. No, no, you've got that wrong. Steal their futures. Make them raise children because now you're making them rear the next generation that will reinforce the future of your empire. But if you just get someone like her and make her a soldier, you just end up with a really weak soldier. That's not really useful at all unless you just want kind of cannon fodder. But now we've discussed how the evil people, actually, we're not evil. I mean, we would have been evil and we were stopped from being evil, but they stopped us from being evil and that means that they're evil because they stopped us. The good guys won and that means that the evil couldn't triumph and that's a bad thing for some reason. There's a huge thing in Hollywood about about trying to make evil good, but this is one of the most mask off examples I could possibly show. The entire tense scene there was disgusting. And it gets worse because Willow and Demon Boy are escaping. We have to hurry, we have to save Allura. Focus! Yeah, she's got a husband. We've no idea what we're walking into. Yeah, that's the problem about it. Not the fact that he won't show up about someone who's got a husband. I need you thinking with your head, not your heart. Why did we have to lose the little dwarf when we could have lost this guy? They, they stripped him of anything that could have made him a possibly interesting character. And now they've just made him rampantly lost after someone that's got a husband. If a character in your hero squad doesn't have any positive traits, don't give them negative ones because it makes them impossible to like. But for some reason, there's a massive party going on and everyone's jumping up and down doing jazz hands. We wouldn't want to do anything else. It might bring on anxiety from people. Jazz hands. <laughs> I mean, apparently that passes for dancing in a forest. So they're sneaking up, and I don't know what their plan is here, considering the entire place is right in front of them. How are you going to take them all on? But they get a couple of weapons, which is definitely going to help against the entire town. It appears we've yet to be detected. What stunning perception skill gave you that idea? Was it the fact that they all had their backs to you? Did you cast, like, an invisibility charm on us? They've got their backs to you! How are you expecting to be seen? Do you think they've got eyes in the back of their heads? The happening is that they really don't care about us. To be fair, I know that feeling 
feeling exceptionally well. But Alora comes running out of the crowd screaming, Willow! Yeah, apparently everything's fine now. We're all friends with the incredibly evil people. Look, I know they go on raiding parties and just kidnap innocent people so they can boil their skulls and wear their faces. But we're friends now because of remember, this is the same group of people that killed their lifelong friends they'd known since they were tiny little babies in the first episode and they don't even care about him. What a poor bloke. Yeah, everything's fine. We're all friends. We're just having a party because she's a bone reaver. She's one of the evil people. I'm sure she feels conflicted between, you know, the rampant evil people that want to dominate an entire region versus the people that stops them, which raised me my entire life and treated me exceptionally. So then we get this scene, which is only beaten by a uh, buttered muffins. Laura, I feel like you're still too cute, Minnie. Yeah, I was just thinking that the massive Jack guy that absolutely wouldn't be the leader of a military roaming warband, he was just too much of a man to exist in the show, wasn't he really? Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy, Tots. You just have a very well-developed palate. Yeah. Now come with me as we go to pick out some strappy shoes. Lock tour to Arthur. Yeah, that's just her using the most powerful wand in existence to stir some soup. They better be some good muffins because she started well, but she's becoming more insufferable as time's gone on. Which I'm pretty sure I predicted that they'd do to her in the first episode, actually. She'd become more like Kit. Ugh, you're such a dad. Which would be a good thing. And you'd think would be appreciated by someone that didn't actually have that as a kid. You actually really well behaved in the first episode. How did you turn into this by episode five? You know, it's a party, it's a celebration. Suddenly everyone's fine now among all the evil people that go around kidnapping innocents from outside and, and boiling their skulls. These people killed my friends, but you know, they gave me a dress, so now I'm happy. Kit decides to get jealous that fancy woman and town leader are talking to each other, despite the fact that they're both sisters. It's okay, Kit, I think you're safe. Although this is Disney, so at this point, I'm not so sure. Slaves of Galadorn, conscripts of Nokmar. All we have ever wanted is our freedom. That's not true. You worked for an evil sorceress to subjugate an entire land of innocent people and went around killing them all. Are we the baddies? I just want freedom and to be left alone. If you just want freedom, why do you send raiding parties out to kidnap innocent people so you can wear their skulls? That our children would not have to live in fear. But you go out with raiding parties to make other people's children live in fear. This is literally the evil god going, I don't know why everyone doesn't like me. Why won't they just let me paint all the walls red? Why does everyone have to struggle and make my life so difficult? Rude, it really is. I really can't think of anything worse as a symbol than a skull. A uh, rat's anus. They'd serve no master. They'd serve no master after you're through with them. Not able to do much of anything. We have no barrier to hide behind. No army to defend us. But you do have an evil magical forest that no one goes into because nobody can leave once they get in it. So how do you leave to go out and send those raiding parties? Because either the forest is making all of this entire episode up in their heads, or you've forgotten your own plot line and forgotten that they're in a magical forest that no one can escape. I've seen the end of the episode. I still don't know the answer to that question. All we have is the fear that our mass evoke. We want freedom and our kids not to live in fear. And the only way we can get that is by scaring everyone else by boiling their skulls and wearing their faces. You considered that if you stopped the latter, then people wouldn't feel the need to come for you in the first place to defend themselves. The determination to survive. No, you've got the determination to kill, not to survive. If you wanted to survive, you'd probably stop pissing off everybody. And each other. Oh. Why is she sitting next to you like she's your friend? If I found out I had a long lost sister and then discovered she was boiling people's heads, then I wouldn't go for tea. After 200 moons, my sister has come home. Why does she look so pleased with herself about it? Was fed lies about us? No, she was fed the truth about you. You've even admitted that everything she knows about you is true. It's not as if they don't have any evidence. You're wearing it on your face. I am so confused about what on earth we're doing. This episode is disgusting. But tonight she is reborn, bathed in the love of her family. And the blood of our enemies. I'm gonna say our enemies. They weren't our enemies until we attacked them first. So many skulls, so little time. And the values that we still fight for. You don't have any values, you're just crazed insane lunatics with an insatiable bloodlust. Freedom. Freedom isn't your value. If you wanted freedom, you wouldn't go around kidnapping people because you would also value their freedom. Rebellion. What are you rebelling against? You're your own leaders. You were the ones in charge. You had no one to rebel against. The entire movie was about your tyrannical reign. Passion and joy. Oh, well, as long as we can bump uglies in the dark, I suppose it counts. 
till the break of dawn. Well, you're gonna go all night to dawn, are you? I mean, that's that's some stamina. But they come around with this weird colored fruit. What is it? I don't know, delicious looking fruit, live a little. Yeah, live a little, just eat this fluorescent thing that we got given that we don't know what it is. From the people that wear skulls over their heads. I'm sure it's safe. They wouldn't harm us. So he eats it, they eat it, and so does everybody else, even Kit. We get a whole dance scene for no reason whatsoever. There's a weird montage of Kit drinking this guy under the table. I don't know if we're supposed to be impressed. I'd be more impressed if she could cook, to be honest. Maybe if she was in that scene earlier going, do you think this is too cumin-y rather than that guy? Then, uh... Could have been a lot more interesting. But yeah, we're all friends now. We're drinking. We're playing the recorder. I know all these people are evil. I know that at any point, innocent families could just be dragged by their hair into the village that we're making friends with. But you know, we're the heroes. It's fine. We'll just do it anyway. It's what a hero would do. So obviously, there was something weird about the fruit as Alora starts to hallucinate. And fake beard guy gets a shave. Now, I don't know whether it's just the bandana, but I kind of like probably put it back on, dude. Is it, is it good? Yeah, because if I wanted fashion advice, I'd definitely be getting it from these four people. What was it about them that made you decide you wanted them to give you a cutthroat shave? Just curious. Do, do you think she'll like it? Oh, women like beards. Dude, it looked fake to begin with. Just glue another one on it. It'll be fine. I wonder wish you'd have told us that before. I don't wish you'd told me before. Why did you grow it in the first place if you thought you'd look better without it? I mean, this guy doesn't have a beard. That guy doesn't have a girlfriend. And also, are we using this guy as a template on what we think we should look like? Was it about the skull boiling cauldron that made you think, actually, I need a makeover. And these are the ones to do it. So we get more dancing. This goes on for a while. Borman makes his way through the crowd to the leader. I believe I left you tied up in my room. Oh, I got lonely. What am I going to do with you? Time back up again. Doesn't sound like you'd have too many complaints. I could have come back, but I didn't. I was ashamed. Yeah, the sudden honesty coming across a bit weird. He decides to open up, tell her the entire story, unleash his whole heart on her, because that always goes well. But obviously, this is a fantasy show, and so it actually does. She asks him to stay, and he's like, I can't, I've got a quest, but I'd like to come back. I can make you stay, you know. You don't need to make him stay. You're in a forest which no one can escape from because it's cursed. Why have we forgotten the plot of the episode and the reason why we entered it in the first place? Make you my prisoner. You're all prisoner of the forest. You can't escape. It's a magical forest. I already am. Oh, oh, careful, I'm gonna be sick. Now, weird demon boy sees this going on and takes it as proof as I should take that guy's advice because it worked for him. Weird. <laughs> There's truth plums for you, I guess. Oh yeah, the truth plums. The weird colorful fruit that they all ate just makes everybody tell the truth. Do you know how bad an idea that would be at a party? Bad enough with alcohol already and now you want people to be magically compelled to say everything they think to people. So, uh, does my bum look big in this? Yes. Yes, it does. Actually, for some reason, people think that's a compliment nowadays, don't they? You used to have to say no to that question, and now you're just supposed to go, absolutely, dear. Seriously, I'm amazed you can fit through a door. Why did social lie to me? It's far kinder for a child to believe that their parents were nice people rather than absolutely pure evil. They were doing you a favor, dear. Did you know? No but I was suspected. How? It's not as if you could have known the original stories or even the events. You're the same age. And you didn't tell me. To be fair, you didn't tell her most things either. You were at least there to send to spy on her. And why would you even bother? Hello, I'd really like to bump uglies with you, but first, let me tell you about your evil lineage. At best, you would have thought I was crazy. At worst, it would have broken your heart. I'm not sure why it would have broken her heart either. Oh yeah, you know, these people that raised me and trained me and fed me and treated me really well my entire life, they also saved me from evil. That makes me so upset. Well, you're certainly the expert on breaking my heart. Where did that one come from? When has she ever done that? I can't even think of a single example. What's going on? You can't just walk off without explaining yourself, you crazy cow. So we just cut to Demon Boy explaining himself. I still don't know why she's broke her heart. What's happened? When did- when? But Alora creeps up on him. I saw you kill your brother. Yeah, but to be fair, he was a demon then as well. Come on. When I kiss. That never happened. You never kissed him. Ever. Not once. I mean, you got close and there was a lot of heavy panting, but you never actually did. But I pulled it out of you. There you go. You should have said drained him. I could have got a better joke out of that one. I told you I was sick as a kid. So it wasn't you that killed your brother and it wasn't you at Nakmar either. Bingo. That's exactly what he's saying and that's exactly what happened. Do you understand how demonic possessions work? So who are you? Well, he's that guy there. He's just not the demon that was in his body before. This isn't complicated. I guess I'm still 
trying to figure it out. Oh, you're just as moronic as she sounds. This is ridiculous. Okay, let me know when you do. See, if you'd given her her answer, then we could have just skipped to the next part. You know, the bit where she reminds you that she's got a husband, but for some reason, she doesn't seem to remember that at the moment. I never leave home without a good digestive tonic and at least three pairs of clean socks. But Willow's being the life of the party. He's telling stories to a load of people. Along comes Demon Boy. Aren't these people lovely? Not long ago, we were scared of them. You should be scared of them. They boil people's skulls and kidnap innocent people from the wilds. <laughs> you should be escaped as fast as possible. Especially this guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when you were telling me that story about how you went into a village? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just burnt down everyone's houses. Oh, it's a laugh a minute what it did. Oh, laugh a minute. I know we're not really friends. Hmm, not even a little bit. But I'm pretty sure you're not evil. What do you mean she's not evil? She's very clearly evil. If anything, she fits right into the crowd. Do you not remember the start where she went, oh yeah, can you please let us escape? But don't worry, you can do whatever you want to our friend over there. How evil do you need to be in this show before you actually do classify as evil? Because at the moment, it seems like you just need to save some people. You're not as useless as I thought you were. That meant to be a compliment? I mean, you're still useless. You're just not as useless as I thought you were. Well, I was wrong. Oh, somebody stop the presses. It took magic, but finally she said something sensible. We need to clip that one because that's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I don't think she's ever going to admit that one again. Despite the fact that it's true all the time. Yet again. But then she decides to ask Alora for relationship advice. Because she knows so much about it for some reason. This is someone who won over a guy with muffins. I mean, it doesn't exactly seem like the most complicated of strategies. But somehow, no, she's supposed to understand how to get two deranged lunatics together. What do I do? Talk to her. And apologize. For what? It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Never apologize for something that isn't your fault. To anybody, ever. Why would I want to hang around with someone who would make me apologize for things which I don't know what I've done and aren't my fault in the first place? They sound like quite a massive arse. I think I'm better with them way over there somewhere off in the distance where I can't see them anymore because it's beyond 10 foot and a past someone's shoulder. Just say the words. Why? If they're that petty and inconsiderate, what's the point? I'm sorry. Why though? She doesn't even know what she's sorry for. Tell her that you understand. She doesn't understand. Tell her that you want to get better. At what? And that you'll be there waiting for her. Unless I walk into an evil fortress, in which case I'll be like, look, just let me leave. Uh, you can do whatever you want with her. She's the last one left in, you know, Hunger Games. When she's ready for you to, to prove it. That's all horrible advice. I, that, that's like rampantly disgusting, horrible advice. Wait, could you say that all again? No, don't. Please. Save us all. But for some reason, she decides to go and follow through on that advice and apologize for something that she doesn't understand and then say that she understands. I'd stick to cupcakes, darling. You are a good person. Tell you what, you can tell he's been drinking, guy. You're my best friend in the whole wide world. How you good you are. I don't know if I am. I mean, I've done some bad things. Don't say that. We all have doubts and insecurities. He's not talking about doubts and insecurities. He says I've done some bad things. This show doesn't even consider boiling an innocent person's skull to be a bad thing. So what's he done? If even the show thinks it's bad, what kind of depraved antics have you been up to, mate? But then, of course, we reach the final humiliation. It's easy for you to say you're, you're Willow of Good, greatest sorcerer of the world. I'm not actually. I never was. Mediocre at best. Yeah, oh, by the way, I'm just crap at everything I do. I mean, I know that I did actually just melt the faces of multiple enemies simultaneously and can do that whenever I want, but I'm just crap. I am actually crap at everything, don't you know? Oh, please, Disney, why can't you just humiliate me some more? Add a couple of zeros to my bank balance, it'll be fine. I don't care how much you destroy the IP or my character. But you defeated Bad Morda. But he goes through the whole story of Bad Morda and how he actually didn't defeat her. She was defeated by her own incompetence. I built my entire reputation on that one success. But it was a pretty massive success, wasn't it? You literally saved the entire entire realm from an evil tyrant. I mean, I don't know, I think I'd dine out on that one for a while too myself. Have you heard about that time I saved the world? Yeah, it was pretty impressive, even if I do say so myself. Willow Uthgood here is terrified that one day he'll be discovered as the aging, talentless hack that he really is. Oh, aren't all men though? Oh, we're all like that. Don't you know that we just act masculine? Because actually, we're all just incredibly insecure narcissists. I mean, when you are quite through humiliating all of the original cast that people actually liked from the first movie, that isn't a type B, then can we please, I don't know, maybe get back to the story. But then we get a scene between Princess and Stable Hand. It's the one the writers have just been gagging to get to the entire series, despite the fact that it's already existed in the first episode. You're gonna be a great knight. 
You look like you belong here. I do. That's because you're rampantly evil. I've always dreamt of going out and just kidnapping innocent families with women and children. This is horrific. I know. I'm glad you agree, love. I actually wasn't expecting it. The thing is, I need you on the quest. I mean all of it. I'm just gagging for it because I'm in a forest and it's episode five. We haven't done anything since episode one. You wouldn't understand. The hormones, dear, they're just pumping around me. I can't wait. I mean life. And I know my dad killed your dad. What is this, a high school playground? Yeah, you don't want to mess with me. My dad's harder than your dad. I can't even imagine how you're feeling right now. Honestly, love, I don't think you'd want me to tell you. I don't care. Wasn't actually expecting a response from us so base, to be honest. <laughs> all I care about is you. No, all you care about is yourself. We've learned that time and time again. And if you want to come here after we find Eric to live, I would tag along. I'd love to boil some skulls myself, you see. It's been one of my lifelong dreams. I don't want to have it any adventures unless they're with you. It's not an adventure. You're boiling skulls of innocent people. That's not meant to make you teary. I should have told you that sooner, you know, and for that, for everything, I'm so sorry. I don't understand. You were together when the show was launched. That was all pre-episode one. In episode one, you were together. I swear, these episodes have been shown out of order. This doesn't make sense with where we've seen these people. We'd have to forget their entire character development up until this point for this scene to make any sense. What do you want to say? In about 10 seconds, I'm going to kiss you. So if you don't want that... Yes, I, I, I mean, I would be very good to that. Why are we asking each other about this? They're making it seem like it's the first time. It happened in the first episode. What is happening? Why are we acting like neither of these people have ever discussed this or talked about this or know this? It's so weird. Oh yeah, everything just happened naturally in the script. You were so desperate in the first episode to tell the audience about them that you crammed it all into such a short space of time that when it gets to the part you actually want to talk about in episode five, you've already told the story. And so telling it again doesn't make any sense. It, you can't claim that this happened naturally when you're literally just cramming it into a place where it doesn't belong. Are you sure? It could have done if you'd managed to shut up about it in the previous episodes, but you were just so desperate, weren't you, to get it out there that you couldn't resist ruining your own story arc. Congratulations. Really, really impressive work. Because if I do, I may never stop. You're gonna have to stop. You've got to breathe and eat at some point. It just seems really unrealistic, even in a fantasy world. I suppose there's only one way to find out. Honestly, it doesn't feel like something you need an experiment for. I can already tell you, you're gonna have to breathe and eat at some point. You can't fight physics. Oh yeah, there was that. Just as they're about to get down and do the deed, they're interrupted by trolls. Like seriously, the only way you could have made it more obvious if you just called them online trolls somehow and fit that in your universe. I couldn't have even imagined you were gonna do this. It's their first time ever because we forgot about the first episode. So, and then they got interrupted by angry trolls. I would say that you couldn't write this, but you, you went and did it. <laughs> So they literally get separated by troll. And somehow she flies up in the air. Kit! Kit! Oh no! Twitter's at it again! <laughs> so she runs back to camp, and the trolls are everywhere, taking loads of people. Just dragging them all into the forest, and the town's running around screaming as if, Oh no! This is what we normally do to everyone else! I can't believe that the trolls are actually doing it to us. This is disgusting. Can't an innocent group of evil murderers just live free in the forest without someone coming to attack them? Ah, that's horrible. So they all group together and stand behind Borman, so they fit in the camera frame. Trolls. That's the reveal that they're trolls, and I wet myself laughing when it said that the first time. I had no idea what the creature was, it just knew that it interrupted them. And yeah. Trolls. Although I have to admit, it was a better reveal than She-Hulk. If you're gonna come out and take the piss out of trolls online, then it's far better to do it in this way than to just put them in your actual story as actually just normal people. Although I do find it interesting that now two Disney series, almost back to back, came out and had trolls as the enemy. <laughs> and I would have thought that when they were talking about trolls, they did just mean the creatures and wouldn't even actually relate it to real life at all if they hadn't deliberately made that entire scene really important and then had the trolls interrupt it. But the morality of this episode was disgusting. I can't believe 
we've made friends with the main villain of the first episode that literally killed a childhood friend. It's disgusting. And even after the quest, they want to come back. Why? Well, you know, I'm kind of a bit related to them. I don't know this person, whereas I know I was raised nicely. But this person is apparently blood, and that means you can just give up everything. I'm even going to join them in their horrible deeds later on, apparently. And that's all good for our heroes to do. It's disgusting. And this episode forgot the main point of its plot, which is why it all happened in the first place. The forest can't be escaped from. That's why the evil sorceress wouldn't let them go into there, because she knew it was magic. And we're left with only really two conclusions. Either the forest is magic, and all of this was a delusion, and the next episode, because we're not out of it yet, or the writers forgot their own storyline because they got so busy sniffing their own farts. But maybe they didn't. Maybe this episode was trying to be clever, which doesn't make any sense, because if it was a magic forest that wouldn't allow you to escape, then the people would have lured them in, and they would have made them stay. They wouldn't have actually allowed them to go out and leave and carry on questing, only to come up with another story and have to constantly create new reasons to stay in the forest. That's ridiculous, it's always going to fail. Give them a nice place where they'd want to stay would have made sense. So I don't think this is a delusion, but it might be. They might be trying to be clever and it might have actually remembered their own plotline. It'd be pretty incredible if they did. Even if their own plot comes true, we've wasted two hours of an eight hour series, which is ridiculous and quite frankly, I don't know which is worse, whether the story's right or whether they forgot about it. But what do you think about it? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.